Now this video is going to talk about where Manny Pacquiao was not Manny Pacquiao. That is, his percentage accuracy wasn't what you would expect. We call it the connect percentage. And this is very important because when Manny Pacquiao doesn't live up to what he's supposed to be, his connect percentage drop. In addition, look at the fights where he has really lower percentage, lower percentages than normal. Okay? Now, let's start off by looking at the same welterweight fights we looked at when we were looking at how many punches Manny Pacquiao threw. Alright? So we'll start off with this fight against Miga Koto. And I'm just looking at the totals, right? When you look at Miga Koto here, Manny Pacquiao threw 780 punches, landed 336 punches. That's a hell of a lot of punches for any fight. 43% was his connect percentage. That is ridiculously high, okay, against Miga Koto. Um, and he was dominating that fight. So it would make sense that. Especially when you hurt Miga Koto in a couple of rounds, like, okay, I'll give you an example of what happens to your percentages as you hurt certain fighters, right? So here in the first round, Pacquiao threw 12 of 20, 41 punches, right? Koto actually out threw him. In the second round, they really wrapped it up. He threw 81, Koto threw 75, but he landed 40. I think he did damage to Koto in that round. So he would exploit Koto in that round, throwing a lot more combinations. In the third round, Koto takes it back over, and Koto's the more energetic one, throwing more punches. In the fourth round, though, Pacquiao catches him back, comes back with full stream, throws more punches, lands more punches. In the fifth round, he throws more, lands more. In the sixth round, he throws more, lands more. Again, he hurts Koto in this round. In the seventh round, he throws us significantly more than Koto. Lands significantly more. The fight is really in his in his hands now. Uh, he had hurt Koto in the sixth, so I think it was the two and the six. He hurt him, dropped him, uh, and then from there on in, Pacquiao was completely in control of the fight. You can see the wide margins of punches. He's beating up Koto. The tenth seemed to have been a much more competitive round in terms of throwing. But it was pretty much all over. I mean, you can see that Pacquiao only threw seven shots. I mean, sorry, he threw 26 shots to Cotto seven. You can see Cotto dropping off, dropping off, and significantly dropping off in the 11th. And then in the 12th, he was really out of the game. Right? So you can just look at the actual fight, too, to see what's really going on there. Complete domination by Pacquiao from round seven onwards. You look at Pacquiao versus Claudi, this fight gives a different picture. His percentages are much lower, and that's tribute to pa uh, Claudi's defense. Really, Claudi was the more effective puncher, it's just that he wasn't doing enough. You know, 399 punches, not a whole lot of punches. You can't win a fight really doing that. Claudi showing mostly that he was defensive, and Pacquiao is completely on the offense, and you're going to you're gonna pick the offensive fighter of the defensive fighter, especially when the offensive fighter is landing more than the defensive fighter as the fight goes along. Okay. Was this Pacquiao-like? No, this was, not, uh, this was not like Pacquiao in terms of his connect percentage, but that possibly is attributed to Claudi's defense and the fact that Claudi just closed up shop so that Pacquiao couldn't hit him anywhere. So Pacquiao basically won this fight on activity, not so much on damaging Claudi. So that's unlike Pacquiao there. Remember his first percentage, we saw that he actually had a 43 percentage against Cotto. That's, that's ridiculously high. That's also unlike Pacquiao. So he had an um, unbelievably high one, and then he had an unbelievably low one. And I think this is because of activity. He won this fight based on activity, really. And the other guy didn't come to fight him. Margarito, 44%. So that's even higher than Cotto. So Pacquiao was ridiculously active and also he was pretty accurate at the same time. So very high numbers again for Pacquiao. When he faced Shane Mosley, 31%, so a little lower than all the other fights we just saw except for his fight against Joshua Clardy, which was really low. So 
here again, Pacquiao has a lot of activity, and he has a pretty decent connect percentage, even though it's nothing like the Margarita fight or like the uh, like the uh, Miga Cotto fight. All right, 81%. 30% against Marquez. That's the lowest percentage we've seen besides the, what is it, the, the, the which one is it, Claudie fight? All right. This time, if you look at the punch stats, you see that uh, Marquez is not that much different in terms of punching his land lift. Marquez has a better connect percentage. So pay attention to Marquez. Marquez had a better connect percentage, kind of like Claudie. And that's because Marquez is a defensive fighter and he's a counter puncher at the same time. So he has similar figures, in fact, better figures than uh, Pacquiao, even though he has less punches landed and less punches thrown. Okay? Pacquiao basically had the edge in all all categories because of his volume. Now, when you look at Pacquiao versus Timothy Bradley, you wonder how did Pacquiao actually lose this fight? Because when you look at the numbers, Bradley only landed 19% of his punches. But kind of like the Cluddy fight, Bradley was the more active fighter. He, I mean, he was he threw uh, some 80 something more punches. 80, 88 more punches than Pacquiao. So he was clearly the much more active guy. Um, he didn't do anything more than Pacquiao. He would just be more active than Pacquiao. Pacquiao was the more accurate fighter. And he also threw more, landed more punches than Bradley. So really and truly, from this data, you'd think that Bradley would lose this fight. But in fact, Pacquiao uh, lost the fight. Which is very interesting. Now when you look at the copy box numbers for Pacquiao's second um, fight against Marquez, again, when you look at his overall percentage, this is a Pacquiao percentage, 37%. Okay? This is this is typical Pacquiao. He, he usually uh, lands at about 35 to 37%. That's his average. However, we've seen him dip below the average in two fights. That would be Marquez, and we also saw it with Claudio, right? Um... And uh, Timothy Bradley fight, he was around about that percentage. So Pacquiao was Pacquiao, basically, uh, for all fights except for Marquez, the third fight, and also for Clotty. But you can see here that Pacquiao gets stopped in this fight. And that's mainly because Marquez, Marquez uh, doesn't outshine Pacquiao in any area here, but he outsmarts Pacquiao. And Marquez dropped Pacquiao twice. Pacquiao only dropped Marquez once. So not always do punch stats indicate who is the winner of the fight. Okay, Brandon Rios versus Pacquiao. This is a percentage again. Total punches landed 36%. This is the percentage that Pacquiao really stays around. Okay, so this this fight went according to what you would expect from a Pacquiao fight. The numbers also balance out. Pacquiao versus Timothy Bradley, the second fight. In this case, Pacquiao again does the percentages that he's supposed to, 35 to 37%, 38%. So that's again, Timothy Bradley does a little better, but again, across the board, Pacquiao does better than Bradley. When Pacquiao faced Algeria again, he has basically Pacquiao numbers, 34%. Algeria, 23%, kind of like a Timothy Bradley kind of thing going on there. Uh, out throws Algeri, 669 punches, 229 landed, you know, out jabs him, out everything. So when Pacquiao faces Mayweather, when Pacquiao faces Mayweather, the tables turn. And this is the only fight out of all the fights Pacquiao's had so far where Pacquiao has had such a low percentage of accuracy. He throws 429 punches. Which is also depressed. So everything here points to Pacquiao actually being tamed by Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather is more active than Pacquiao, but he's also more accurate than Pacquiao. He lands more of his punches than Pacquiao does his. And really, in no category does Pacquiao beat Mayweather in this case, showing just how superior Mayweather was to Pacquiao. But from that experience, 
Manny Pacquiao actually, uh, again, was not as effective as Timothy Bradley. If he didn't drop Timothy Bradley twice, you would really figure that Timothy Bradley beat Pacquiao because Timothy Bradley has much more accuracy. 99 uh, of 322 punches thrown, 99 of them land, so he's the much more accurate puncher. Pacquiao is 27%, 27.8%, which is kind of low for him. It should be about 34, 35, 36, 37%. So Bradley really did have a profound impact on Pacquiao, but Pacquiao was able to do two things. One, he out-jabbed Bradley, though Bradley was the more accurate with his jabs. And two, when it comes to power punches, he just out, he really outdid Bradley with the power punch. And even though it was only by 5%, it's still a remarkable thing. But Bradley has significantly closed the gap on Manny Pacquiao. Actually, Bradley actually would have done like how Floyd May would have done, except he got dropped twice. Okay, and again, that's kudos to Pacquiao. You know, that was kudos to Pacquiao there. Now, finally, we have Manny Pacquiao versus Jesse Vargas, and Manny Pacquiao was Manny Pacquiao here. Thirty-six percent of his punches landed. It says 408, not 409, but 408 punches he threw. 147 landed. That's very good. And Jesse Vargas, like Timothy Bradley, like uh, Chris Algieri, you know, like the last Marquez fight, actually wasn't as accurate as Pacquiao was. So there are only a couple fights where Pacquiao has actually not been himself. One of the Marquez fights... Uh, the, the Joshua Clotty fight, but he still beat it, beat Clotty based off of his activity. Mayweather fight, Timothy Bradley fight, he wasn't himself as well. This is the second Timothy Bradley fight, he's actually not himself. Third, third Timothy Bradley fight, sorry, he was not himself. And of course, the Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight, he was not himself. Um, even though he got the wins, his percentage of accuracy, that is to say, was not uh, his percentage of accuracy was not um, what you typically expect from a Manny Pacquiao, and that's because Floyd Mayweather was difficult to hit. It tells you something about the defense of these fighters, right? Uh, Marquez in the in the actual uh, final fourth clash actually wasn't boxing like Paul Marquez usually box. He was getting hit quite a lot. And Pacquiao was more like Pacquiao there. Uh, and he still dropped Pacquiao. He still knocked him out, right? Now, in the third fight with Marquez, however, Pacquiao was not Pacquiao. Marquez had 32% more accuracy than Pacquiao, okay? So these are, these are huge things there. Um, other than that, I think... Manny Pacquiao was himself. Joshua Claudio, of course, has great defense. You're not going to just hit Joshua Claudio like that. But it's just that Joshua Claudio wasn't as active as Pacquiao. And he's throwing a lot of punches, but a lot of them were blocked. So, great defensive fighter in Joshua Claudio. Pacquiao could not get past his defense as he would like, but he still outlanded uh, Joshua Claudio in terms of total punches. He also landed more power shots on Claudio. The other exception was Marquez. And Marquez also, even though Pacquiao uh, outlanded Marquez, Marquez had the more accurate punching and percentages. And then, of course, we have Pacquiao versus... Uh, Mayweather. But Mayweather dominated in all categories, okay? And then you had Timothy Bradley, where Pacquiao also was uh, out. Again, Timothy Bradley was much more accurate in what he was doing, and that's a tribute to Teddy Atlas, actually. If Timothy Bradley didn't get dropped, okay, in this fight, he probably would have had the fight in his hands. He really might have won this fight. Because his percentages are better than Pacquiao are almost across the board. The only thing that he didn't have a better percentage in was power punching. And, he, he, you know, it kind of cost him a little bit. But uh, Timothy Bradley's strongest case might be here for winning the fight based on punch stats. So why I say this is because, once again, 
Floyd Mayweather makes guys who are supposed to be spectacular and and they are terrific fighters he can make them have to resort to something else that's what that tells you and also that his defense was very hard to penetrate which is why Manny Pacquiao uh, not only did he not land like the percentages that he had after the fight but also because he couldn't throw uh, he couldn't throw a whole bunch of punches. He would mostly, if, I mean, Bang Pack, he could just throw phantom punches, but at the air. But if if he were to do that too much, Floyd would actually get into the spaces and counter the daylights out of him. So the more Pacquiao was to throw, is the more he would get countered. So that's why Manny Pacquiao, it, it, from the second round when he got check hooked, he realized this is not a punch. This is not a fight where you try to overwhelm somebody with punches. This guy, you know, you try to you try to get in close to overwhelm him, you're gonna get popped. Anyway, I just thought I would share that with you guys. You guys have a great one.